Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about the black boxes. Why are they called black boxes when they're actually orange? And what do they do? So stay tuned. I want to start by dedicating this video to the love of my life, Sandra. Sandra, you're my wife, you're the one who's supporting me through all of the work on the channel and all the work I do with my actual job. I love you, honey. So, uh, black boxes, guys. Uh, what you need to understand is that I say black boxes because there tends to be two of them. Okay, uh, every aircraft that is above 5,700 kilos of maximum takeoff weight needs to have the black boxes fitted to them. And the black boxes is the uh, CVR, the cockpit voice recorder, and the FDR, which is a flight data recorder. Okay, they work in similar ways. They capture data that is there to help an investigation team to determine what went wrong in case of a serious accident or incident. The uh, flight data recorders are stored in the back of the aircraft towards the tail section, normally above the passenger uh, cabin, uh, because that's the part of the aircraft that is less likely to sustain major damage in case the accident would happen. Uh, if we start with the flight data recorder, okay, the flight data recorder records loads of different parameters. Okay. By law, it has to uh, record at least 88 different parameters, and that includes things like real time, the aircraft's path, aircraft speed, uh, the position of the um, thrust levers, engine indications uh, and engine parameters, the position and movement of flight control surfaces, and basically anything that can have an impact on the flight, basically, in, in order to understand what has happened to the aircraft. So modern aircraft, they, they have over a thousand different parameters and those are being recorded continuously for 25 hours and then they're being over recorded so the last 25 hours of, of an aircraft's uh, existence is always recorded the cockpit voice recorder is slightly different as you can uh, as you can hear from the name of it 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 actually captures the voices of the pilots and it also captures what's going on in the area of the cockpit so it takes the input from both our headsets uh, from whatever goes out to air traffic control but also up here there is a, an area recorder that picks up any ambient noise so if there would be a large bang or a crack or a hiss or something maybe the pilots are talking without having their headsets on all of that is also being recorded okay it can record up to two hours so the last two hours of a flight is continuously being recorded and and then it's being overwritten and that's important to remember because i'm going to explain a little bit about how we use the voice recorder later on okay now because we're supposed to be able to to um, to get these vo these uh, black boxes even if the aircraft has sustained major damage it has to be built to really really tough specifications both the CVR and the uh, FDR needs to uh, be able to withstand the pressure of being submerged in water up to 20,000 feet deep. Okay, they are uh, they are equipped with a pinger. It's called. It's a uh, basically a little radio transmitter that transmits a ping, and that is alive for up to 30 days after it feels that it's being submerged in water. It's also supposed to be able to withstand direct fire and uh, I think it's, um, it's an enormous amount of heat that it's supposed to be able to, uh, to sustain over you know, several thousand degrees. Uh, it's supposed to be able to withstand 3400 G's on, of impact uh, and uh, many many different um, basically abuses like that. So, it is enclosed in a fantastically hard shell. All right. and now we're getting a little bit closer to why uh, the black boxes were called black boxes, are still called black boxes, but are actually orange. So the 
they started to be manufactured back in the 1950s. Back in the 1950s, they were actually black, okay? They were coated in a heat resistant and fire resistant paint, which was generally black. Now, from 1965 and forward, they, they were forced to, or they were, there was a mandate that the black boxes had to be painted orange. And the reason for that, as you might have guessed by now, is to be able to be easily found in a crash site because there's very few things in nature with orange except for actual oranges so orange or yellow which it can be in some cases are easy to find in a in a crash site where there might be a lot of burned components or in the nature it's be, if it's been thrown out into the nature so that's the reason why uh, the black boxes which was the original name are actually orange they're supposed to be easy to find Okay, so uh, what about how we use them then? Um, the, uh, the, both the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder are automatically, um, they automatically start to record. But they only start recording from when we start the, um, the engine, at least in the case of the flight of the uh, cockpit voice recorder. So what we do when we uh, do our um, initial cockpit preparation is that we turn the flight sorry the cockpit voice recorder on so it's up here we switch it on like that in order for it to capture all of the things that we say inclu including our briefings uh, our um, performance calculations and things like that so that it, it it captures all of that as well in case something would happen it would be um it would be easier for the uh, the investigators to find out that well actually they did a, a wrongful performance calculation and that is what led up to whatever the, the sad outcome actually was but it doesn't always have to be a crash okay we we use the cockpit voice recorders when we do investigations into less serious incidents as well and since I was saying in the beginning that the uh, the cockpit voice recorder overwrites itself every two hours, it means that it's extremely important that we actually stop it from recording in case something really, um, really bad would happen or something that we need to, to make a report about. So if we have, for example, a, um, a rejected takeoff due to lack of performance or if we have a near air you know mid-air collision or if we were about to take off on the wrong runway or basically anything that requires a um, well not everything but most of the things that are serious enough to require an investigation when we get back into gate we stop the aircraft and shut down the engine we actually have to pull the CVR circuit breaker so that is extremely important because if not then we might run the risk of whatever happened being destroyed by you know continuously overwritten by the aircraft so uh, there are actually some um, some some flight deck procedures involved with the cockpit voice recorder when it comes to the flight data recorder there's not much we can do it just records everything but it is being used not only in uh, in accident investigations but also to monitor things like for example the engine parameters because it can start seeing when an engine is starting to become old that some certain parts of it you know is starting to to give way and that way when when they do the yearly check of the flight data recorder or even if they have a suspicion that something is wrong with an engine they can go in they can log into the flight data recorder and they can get that data and get that confirmed so it's actually a very good system now the old um, CVRs and FDRs they um, they tended to be written on magnetic tape all right nowadays we're using um, we're using memory cards, you know, solid state memory cards because they can record a lot more data on it continuously and it's also no moving parts, so it's less, less of a chance that something will actually break. Now, I've gotten the question on the channel as well, why don't we, um, why, why don't we just transmit all of this data continuously all the way? Why, why isn't, you know, why is, do we still have to go out and look for a, um, for a black box when, when something has happened? And that's a good question. I think coming up in the future, we will probably see some kind of uh, a satellite based system that will be serving as kind of a backup for the, uh, the cockpit voice recorders. 
and for the uh, um, flight data recorders. But at the moment, this is the best and most secure thing we have, right? Because this is at the same place, it records everything, it is not subject to any kind of interference or lack of data um, collection or anything like that. So I think that we'll probably see a backup. There is backups to a certain extent already, but this system is more or less foolproof. Guys, I hope you um, I hope you like that explanation. Make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you've ticked the notification box so that you know when I'm doing live streams and stuff like that. And uh, get the uh, Mentor Aviation app. Um, we're getting more and more people in there. The chat is more and more exciting every day that goes by. It's a lovely app to have. It's completely free to download. So wherever you are out there in the world, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. And I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.